Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here once again because Glenn Maxwell has done it again. This time with a bit more help from uh, Matthew Wade, a great late cameo from Wade, helped set up a very, very improbable victory in the third 2020 against India, over in India. So uh, I don't know if anyone's been following this series as such, but for those who haven't, uh, we lost the first game off the final ball, good game, high scoring game over 200 uh, runs each. In the second T20, we uh, I streamed it on the channel and that one was a bit more one-sided. India scored about 235 and we fell a good 40 runs short. In this game was trending very much in the same way. India made 222, a very, very formidable total. Their opener, Gay Quad, scored 123 off 57 balls, a, a stunning innings. Um, and once again, for the third time this series, our bowlers just haven't really looked like challenging the Indian top and middle order, it has to be said. Uh, the bowling was a bit of a mixed bag. I know Aaron Hardy went for over 60 runs. Astoundingly, in a game where we conceded over 220 runs, Jason Berendorf took one for 12 or four overs. That is just absolutely outstanding. Uh, but once again, we've conceded over 200. The chase starts pretty well. Uh, we score about 40 odd in the first four overs and we start to periodically lose wickets. Uh, when Travis Head gets dismissed for 35, we're two for 66, still in the first six overs of the game. And then the very next ball, we lost Josh Inglis as well. And it, this, the game started to take a little bit of a, a familiar tone. But Glenn Maxwell's at the crease, and he just really is playing by his own rules this year. He's, he's obviously had that, uh, was it a 40-ball ton against the Dutch in the World Cup? And then, of course, that 201 against Afghanistan. This guy just doesn't consider the actual probabilities of Australia winning games. He will just play his own way. He put on about a 60-run partnership with Stoinis that went for about seven overs. Stoinis only scored 17 of those runs. Uh, Tim David then got out for a golden duck. And by that point, we needed about 89 off 34. And this game was more or less dead and buried. But he doesn't care. He's still hitting boundaries. And with three overs to go, Australia needed 49 runs to win, which in itself is one thing. But when you consider off that next over, we only scored six runs. So that became 43 off the final two overs. This is where Matthew Wade actually deserved a lot of the credit because he scored 22 runs off this next over, which had its own level of controversy. And there was drama and everything seemed to be going away against the way of the Indians. There was a stumping appeal that when we reviewed, it was determined that the keeper had taken the ball in front of the line of the stumps. It was then ruled a no ball. A free hit followed and Matthew Wade hits a massive six. So he's wiped off half the equation. We still need 21 runs or something like that off the final over. But because of a slow over eight, India is penalized and they have to bring an extra extra fielder into the center ring. So in other words, one less fielder out on the boundary is allowed for the final over. And when you've got Glenn Maxwell on strike, that is a danger sign. Actually, forgive me, Matthew Wade started the next over on strike. He hits a four and then a single. Then Maxwell backs it up with a massive six. And by this point, he's moved into the 90s. So it was 16 needed off four. Then after that six, it was 10 needed off three. Glenn Maxwell hits another four, six needed off two. The next ball is a full toss, another boundary, and Glenn Maxwell has hit the equal fastest century by an Australian in a T20. So he's 100 not out of 47 balls. We need two runs off the final ball, and he smacks it straight as an arrow, straight down the ground for another boundary. He finishes 104 not out of 48 balls. But again, the scorecard won't tell you how one side of that contest sort of got in the final three overs, in particular the last two overs, and how Australia made it very easily in the end. So to summarize, just a wonderful, amazing one-man performance again from Glenn Maxwell. This time he had some support. Matthew Wade was also really critical uh, in a clutch performance. Jason Berendorf would have also been a worthy man of the match for one for 12 off his four overs. But Glenn Maxwell is in the form of his life at the moment, and uh, I believe he's flying home now to Australia. But if this guy plays many BBL games, uh, geez, look out. Speaking of guys, you'll notice I have started doing some Big Bash League content for you coming up. The, the whole series starts off on December 7th, so make sure you're either subscribed to the channel or you tune in for all the content and the live streams that I will be doing. But for now, thanks very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.